Hello everyone and welcome to this quick code tutorial on how to make a basic third-person camera in God of War and C Sharp. By the end of the video, you'll know how to use a simple Godot camera 3D node to film your scene and make sure that it always follows your player avatar, but also how to avoid the annoying issue of it clipping into every wall. Of course, as usual, don't forget that if you want to get the files of this tutorial directly, you can have a look at the GitHub repo with all my code tutorials over here. Also, since we'll be coding in C Sharp, make sure that you're using a version of Godot with .NET enabled. And just before diving in, what if your next game wasn't 3D but 2D? Well, if you want to learn more about 2D tools for your future Godot for C Sharp game projects, then go ahead and check out my brand new short read ebook, Lavmana Mini 2D Platformer. This quick, practical guide will teach you the fundamentals of doing 2D games in this game engine, with essential notions like tile maps, 2D physics, animations, character controllers, and more. You'll even see how to build your very own 2D platformer game step by step. So, if you want to discover some 2D tricks for your next God of War C Sharp game in just about 100 pages and for a low price, don't hesitate to have a look at the Gamerot page. But anyway, with all that said, let's dive in and discover how to set up a basic third-person camera in Godot and C Sharp. Okay, so let's say that we have this scene. This is a basic dungeon kind of level that I used in this previous video of the series, where we discussed how to implement the movement of this platform in the middle. And of course, it uses Kenny's really cool mini dungeon kit for the assets. For now, we don't have any camera in the scene, meaning that if we run the game, it won't render anything. Our goal will be to attach a camera to our player object, over here, so that it follows it at all times, and rotates along with it, like this. By the way, you'll also notice that here, I'm reusing the animated physics-based controller that we created in this other tutorial of the series, and I've already prepared the player avatar with this setup. Okay, to do this, it's actually super simple. Cause if we open up our player scene, add a camera through the node child inside the hierarchy, and move it slightly behind our character, with a down angle so that it looks a bit to the ground, we're basically done. Indeed, since our character controller is attached to this parent node in the hierarchy and moves it, anytime we translate or rotate it via our code, all of its child node will automatically follow. That's the whole concept of parenting in a game engine. Though just to get a better view and really adjust our camera, I want to take this opportunity to talk about a super neat Godot plugin that was published very recently, and that you can get easily from the Godot Asset Library tab at the top of your editor. It's called Little Camera Preview, it was released just three weeks ago by Anthony Cousins, and it's just an amazing way of getting a little preview of your camera just by selecting it, and so this is integrated in the viewport, it doesn't require you to split everything anymore, you can even scale the preview up and down, move it to the bottom corner of the viewport, pin it so that it stays even if you select another node. In short, it's really a must-have for any Godot dev, in my opinion, and as all Godot assets in the library, it's completely free and installable with just a few clicks. So once you've installed the add-on and enabled it in your project settings panel in the plugins tab, you'll get this new preview in your scene viewport, and you can now move your camera to get just the perfect framing of your hero. And there we are! We've just made a super basic but functional 3D camera for our dungeon RPG. If you feel like it's a bit too wide, and it's a bit deformed in distance, then you might want to play around with the FOV, so the field of vision of the camera, to change this field of view, and for example reduce it to make it a bit straighter. But that's just personal preferences, so it's up to you. Although it works great in wide spaces, you'll quickly notice that there's a big issue with this super simple setup. We get the dreaded wall clipping problem. That's an infamous issue with all three cameras, that's made for really clunky controls and framings in the early 2D to 3D game transition era, by the way, and it just completely ruins the experience. So let's see how to avoid this problem. To avoid the wall clipping, it's luckily once again extremely simple. 
Godot actually has another trick up its sleeve for this specific use case, and that's the spring arm 3D node. In a nutshell, this node allows us to define a spring of a given length that tries to put any child node hooked to it at this specific distance of its own position but that can also contract to bring the child node closer if this endpoint is colliding with something. So basically, in our case, by creating a spring arm to the node in our player hierarchy, moving it up slightly, changing its length, shown as this thin light line, so that it matches our current distance between the player and the camera, and rotating it so that we align our spring with the current camera to player direction, and finally, putting our camera to the node inside, we basically solve our collision issue. So now, if we get close to a wall and we turn around, the spring arm automatically contracts and brings the camera back towards our player, zooming in and avoiding the wall. So at this point, we have an almost perfect basic third-person camera, but there's one last issue that you might miss if you're not careful, and that's a really weird glitch that happens if I try to take my character on the moving platform. You see that it looks as if my spring arm was getting crazy and popping in and out suddenly. In fact, that's because there are some unexpected collisions. And more precisely, our spring arm detects collisions with the player object itself. Now, it only happens on the moving platform because that's kind of a special case where the player has to stick to this moving ground, but it could actually happen at other times too, and that's because if we take a look at how our spring arm is configured by default, we see that it's supposed to check collisions with the physics layer 1, which is also the layer that my avatar is on. Now, of course, you could try and play around with the layer's value and change it for the player or the walls, but ultimately, you'll probably have the same issue, because you can't have the spring arm collide with the walls, but not the player, if the walls and the player collide together. Or can you? Actually, in our case, the trick is that our spring arm is inside our player collider, whereas it's not inside the walls. So we can solve our problem by using its shape property and creating a new separation ray shape inside. This specific 3D shape tells Godot to try and separate the spring arm from the collider it hit, meaning that it won't collide with the player collider anymore, but instead move out of it. And that's it. We're done. With no issues and no clipping. In a matter of minutes, we've made a simple third-person camera system for our Godot Dungeon RPG, and it only required two new nodes in our player scene. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to like it and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. It always helps when you join the community and show your support. And of course, don't hesitate to drop a comment with ideas of Godot tricks that you'd like to learn. As always, thanks a lot for watching. And take care.